Temperatures rising to the highest they've been all week long. We are about set to go with USF 2000 and their debut race here at the Cooper Tires Grand Prix of Sebring. My name is Rob Howden. Welcome, folks, to Sebring International Raceway. It's going to be 90 degrees when we get ready to go green flag racing for USF 2000. These drivers with the largest grid here this weekend set to go for their third race of the season. Joining me now as we get ready to roll here is the driver who will start from pole in this Paps race machine, Simon Sykes. Simon, a pole position based on speed at the Grand Prix of St. Petersburg. This time in qualifying, you get the job done. Leading from P1 here at Sebring is, I think, crucial if you want to win. Absolutely. It's, uh, it's a tough track. Getting out on the first lap is going to be key. And I'm really, really excited. This is a... The first time I've actually gone through a qualifying session and made it made it to pole position. We we had the pole at St. Pete based on on uh, on our fastest race lap, but it's been a few years and I've been chasing this day forever. So uh, pole position's great to do it in quality, but it's all, all focused forward on the race and see what we can do there. Simon's a driver we've been watching for the last couple of years has never had a top tier ride with a real opportunity to try to win races and potentially win a championship. And he doesn't really have the budget for the full season, so he's got to go out there and show what he's made of. And for you now, in your second week weekend in PAPS racing. Uh, you've got to feel for the team a little more. You did the testing, not a lot of testing, but some testing. You've got to have a race though under your belt with them. How do you feel coming into Sebring right now with Sebring, uh, with St. Pete behind you? Excellent. A lot of confidence. I mean, th this team is the greatest. Uh, they, they've been so gracious to me. They're, they've got absolutely bad, fast cars, and it, it's been a pleasure to work with them so far. So just trying to trying to do the car justice and, and bring it home P1. Uh, Paps Racing 1-2 as well as young 14-year-old Max Garcia qualifying on the outside of the front wheel with you. You've been touting him the entire weekend. Say, watch out for this kid. He's going to be a superstar. He's your teammate here. Nice to have that in a turn number one. Maybe a little bit of assurance that he's not going to take you out coming out of that first corner. Uh, he's got a level head on him, and he's he's really, really quick. Uh, I've been telling you this all, all weekend, all, all preseason leading up to this. This is the first time we've seen him in action in a qualifying session, uh, and he's living up to it. He did a great job in quality. It was about 200 off, off my time for, for pole, so a great day for pass racing to be able to lock out the front row, but ra race ahead of us, and we'll see what we can do. Simon's looking for his first win here in USF 2000, but he's no stranger to victory lane. He's won before the SCCA National Championship runoffs. Can you rely on that? Can you go back on winning those national races at, at big events and be able to take that here to try to get that first win? Absolutely. There's there's a difference in, in running a race and trying to fight your way forward versus uh, leading from the front and, and uh, trying to secure that with no one in front of you. Uh, I've been there before, not not in this series yet. Uh, it's been a long time coming, so we're trying to do that today. But all those all those 1600 races, all all the prep that's led up to this, uh, I think gives me uh, the mental edge to be able to to have the confidence to lead from the front. It's a four day race weekend, as we know here at the Cooper Tires Grand Prix of Sebring. USF Juniors running Thursday and Friday. The Pro Drivers on Friday and Saturday, and of course USF 2000 today, Saturday, and tomorrow with one race as well. Let's wrap it up with this. Have you learned anything from the racetrack? You only got that you know morning session in the cool, a very short qualifying run. Were you able to maybe talk to your, your teammates here at Paps Racing in the Pro 2000 class to get a feel for what this racetrack is going to be like over a long distance? Absolutely. They did a 15-lap race yesterday, so it was great to see what they were doing. We had uh, a front row lockout there as well, but the driver swapped around into turn one, so looking what we can do there. And the really interesting thing has been going over data with Max, the young 14-year-old who's really, really fast. And, and the crazy thing is we make all our speed in different places. So combine the best of both of us, and theoretically there's a perfect lap there somewhere. Paps Racing looking very good here locking out the front row as we said simon sykes on the inside max garcia on the outside when we get back from this break i'll give you the full grid as we get set to go race one for usf 2000 get a lot of hot. we're like any normal family we just get shorter wait times because we buy and book online at discounttire.com so easy which gives us more time for things like oh, come on mom <laughs> ready And it's all thanks to Kyle. <laughs> Thank you. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Let's get you taken care of. And ladies and gentlemen, back live here from Sebring International Raceway as we get set to go. First race for the drivers at USF 2000, all part of this four-day Cooper Tires Grand Prix of Sebring. It is a warm one, but as hot as it's been over the last three days, 91 degrees ambient temperature track side of the drivers here. Rolling off to get things underway. Uh, they'll get the one lap around the racetrack. We'll have a look at the grid. We'll get an opportunity to potentially bring in uh, my guest announcer for this particular race, Francesco Pizzi, one of our USF Pro 2000 drivers, and, of course, also a winner 
from the 24-hour Rolex event in Daytona. We'll talk about that throughout this 12-lap uh, race. But let's have a look at the grid as they get set to go, taking on this 3.74-mile 17-turn uh, corner. They'll work their way to turn number five through turn number six. 18 drivers make it 19 set to go here in USF 2000. Lucas St. John will start at the tail of the field after an issue in qualifying. St. John for J. Howard Driver Development in the number nine starting 19th. Row at number nine will see Nikita Johnson on the outside, a winner. Uh, from the event at St. Petersburg, had trouble in qualifying. We had a very short qualifying session uh, due to an issue on the racetrack that took up a lot of the time. So a number of these drivers uh, only get a couple laps in, Nikita Johnson being one of them. So we'll keep an eye on the VRD racing driver coming from the tail of the field in the number 17. He'll start alongside Maxwell Jameson in the D-Force, number 12. Row 8 will have Avery Towns for exclusive autosport on the outside of the number 93. The Texan starting alongside Zach Ping in the VRD, number 97. Row 7 will have Ethan Ho for DC Autosport. He drove this car yesterday in USF Juniors. They flipped it over and converted it overnight into USF 2000 trim. So Ho starting back at 14th, but he's shown speed to run higher than that. He'll start in the 7th spot alongside the driver who caused that red flag in qualifying. An issue for Jace, Chase Gardner. He was in the wall on the outside of row number 17. They've got that car put back together with the number 95 for exclusive Autosport set to roll off from 13th. Row number six will have Al Morey on the outside for Jay Howard Driver Development in the number seven. The Indiana driver starting alongside Gordon Scully for VRD in the number 19. Into the top 10 now. Row number five on the outside, Danny Dazelski in the number 18. He'll start 10th. Alongside him, Matt Clark, you're defending or reigning USF Juniors champion Clark out of Ontario, Canada in the number one for D-Force Racing. Row number four will have Jorge Garcias on the outside, the D-Force number 10, and on the inside from New Zealand. It's Jacob Douglas for exclusive on sport in the number 90. Row three will have Sam Corey out of North Carolina in the number 14 for VRD Racing. He'll start sixth. And on the inside, one of the drivers of the points hunt right now. He currently sits in the fourth position coming into the event. Eva Goris Papasabas in the number six for J. Howard Driver Development. He'll start in the fifth position. Row number two will have Elliot Cox on the outside. And the Sarah Fisher Hartman Racing Development drive planning number 67. He'll start fourth. And on the inside, the point leader coming in. A first and a third place finish in the opening round at St. Petersburg. Lockie Hughes for J. Howard Driver Development starting in eighth. 19 drivers in the field, two on the front row. All Paps racing up front, and what a starting position for the 14-year-old driver making his debut out of Florida, Max Garcia, the number 24 advanced auto parts machine. He'll start second, but the driver on the pole, ready to take it down to turn number one, Simon Sykes, third in points coming in, second place in the second race in St. Petersburg. He'll be on the pole position, his teammate on the outside. Field coming through Sunset Bend, turn number 17. Time to go racing here right now for USF 2000, the first of two races on the weekend here, Saturday and Sunday. Field looks good, and we are green, green, green. Racing down into turn number one. Sykes looking good from the bottoms. Let's see if Garcia is able to challenge him. Here comes one of the drivers, Lockie Hughes, looking to the inside as well. Hughes goes to the inside. A little bit of contact there between he and Sykes. Sykes, I think, able to hold. No, Sykes as Lockie Hughes has gone into position. One driver, four wheels off. And I think Lockie Hughes able to get the spot, but there was contact. That was, I believe, right front to left rear contact. And I wonder if there's damage potentially to Sykes. We'll see if he's able to hold on here right now because he potentially has an issue. Another driver off there. That may be Sykes falling down the order as I believe Elliot Cox moving his way into second position. Cox started fourth. He goes to P2, I believe. Here comes the run down into turn number seven. Indeed, the move back to the inside. No, oh, that's Sykes still there. So Sykes still holding on to second. He gets inside Cox. It was Garcia that went back a couple of positions. But as they went through turn number one, a big run for Lockie Hughes. He tucked the car to the inside, and he takes over the lead. Now we'll lose him for a little bit here through 8-9, and they'll come back over to turn number 10. We'll show you the gap for Lockie Hughes. Indeed, there's the lead. There's Sykes running in second. Third spot is Cox, and fourth pot spot, I believe, will be Iba Goris Papasavas. We'll bring in Francesco Pizzi, who's fresh out of the car after his race in USF Pro 2000. Right now, let's, let's use you completely as, oh, contact first. Drivers together, and we have contact. It is going to bring out a full course yellow. Two drivers together there. Looks like potentially the 17 in Nikita Johnson and the 97 of Zach Ping. The two VRD drivers have made contact. Uh, not quite sure where that is on the racetrack at this point. That could be turn. That's out of turn number 10, I believe. Out of turn 10. You got to believe that the 17 potentially going down the inside. Francesco, there you go. We got a start here and some action early on already. Well, what a start. I mean, 
The, we saw how powerful the list stream is already coming into uh, T1. Yuse was just behind Sykes and he could just get the toe and get up the inside. I think Sykes was covering off his teammate on the outside. And kind of like Michael was doing earlier in the race, actually, in the Pro 2000, and Miles did the same. So we've seen that third spot is very good. I was the only one who could not take advantage of it so <laughs> far, but <laughs> yeah, I mean. What a start already, we saw so much shuffling going on and that dirt out of T5 is making drivers doing a lot of mistakes. Apparently the truck might be very slippery. And I can tell you here, when you do a mistake, you're gonna feel it for a lot of corners uh, because it's such a flowy track that when you actually lose a position somewhere, then you just lose momentum and that just loses you a lot of time. And we've seen that happening probably to Garcia. I don't know where he's falling back right now, he's falling to fifth. And that just shows how much a Sebring just doesn't say sorry, really. <laughs> it does, it, not like that. Yeah, it does not say sorry. No apologies from this racetrack at all. And you can see it happen. A lot of action uh, as they came through turn number one. Again, Lockie Hughes making the move to the inside of Simon Sykes. He's able to take the spot away. Looks like there's potential contact mid-corner. Sykes having to potentially get out of it a little bit as well. But the contact bringing out this uh, yellow flag, this full course yellow, those two drivers starting pretty deep in the field. Nikita Johnson back in 18th at the start. Zach Ping in 15th. Both, of course, probably pretty anxious to work their way forward. And those two VRD drivers making contact in turn number 10. That's brought out the full course yellow. And we'll put both of these drivers at the tail of the field because they're going to go at least one lap down. And potentially, depending on the severity of the damage, they may be out of this race completely. The AMR ambulance over there as well. Both drivers in the car still. Neither have got out of the car. I think they're both hoping that they'll be able to separate these cars and get them back underway. But this looks like it could potentially be a long fix to get these cars taken care of as the AMR crew there. And obviously now waiting for a tow truck to separate these cars. So, again, as I said, I was going to come to you, Francesco, before. And let's because you just came off the racetrack, how can you describe the conditions? Have they been changing over the weekend? Obviously, you got on track yesterday. This, you guys are now wrapped up for the weekend. How was the track for you guys? The track is not forgiving. We've seen today, uh, actually, a mistake on my race. It's very easy to do a mistake because the wind is changing every single lap. It's not consistent at all. It's not helping on that high speed, especially out of T1. And we see how much you're just choosing the right line. It feels ne nearly like an oval when really you choose the high line or the low line. And at the end of the lap, you might find yourself with an advantage of four or five positions. We see, for example, Chase Gardner, who's made up five positions on this first lap. And uh, yeah, I mean, two other cars out. So it makes a huge difference just making the right choice and getting back up the field. Um, while I was driving, we saw the front row, of, uh, Michael and I, not doing so well uh, at the end of the race. So I think this race is still long and definitely a lot of openings could be coming. Give me some insight, Francesco, on the grip levels. I know, uh, you know, obviously it's not as cool as it was. 91 degrees right now. I think you, when you guys were racing, it was 89 or 90, so a lot hotter than it was maybe yesterday morning and throughout the day yesterday. Did you feel that the grip level was there? Was it greasy at all? You could feel the grease definitely from the qualifying session coming to the race. And uh, yeah, um, the rear tires are suffering a lot in these conditions. We had to change some gears and some corners compared to yesterday and this morning. And uh, uh, as well, yeah, as I said, the wind is the biggest fact, especially to 17 and 1. We've seen a lot of drivers doing mistakes there, especially T1, because we got this wind just cutting across the corner and all that, being, not helping you at all on the exit. And we saw, I think, five or six drivers in the Pro 2000 race doing a mistake there. Oh, okay. Interesting for sure how uh, the drivers kind of get themselves in position. We'll give you a rundown here, as you can see. Uh, we'll come back to it in a little bit. A lot of work being done here. One of the flatbeds coming in. Of course, the AMR safety crew kind of having to assess the damage on these cars. Again, there you have it there. We'll have the tow truck in here as well to try to pick one of these cars up. And, in fact, I think we may be going red. Yeah, not surprising. Our race control, Joel Miller and uh, Johnny Unser electing to go red here. So, indeed, trying to save some of the laps. One of the things we obviously look forward here and look to do with this USF Pro Championship is make sure drivers get as many laps as possible. And with the incident going to take time, we do have a window here right now. We have a certain amount of time to be able to get this race done, 40 minutes to get these 12 laps in the books. So, why not put, put the cars on pit lane? We'll go red flag. That way we're not burning laps, running around under the yellow. We'll try to get this thing cleaned up as soon as we possibly can and then get it back and make sure we get as many green flag laps as possible. Again, joining me in pit lane right now, the driver for TJ Speed Motorsports, and that is uh, Francesco Pizzi from Italy. Great to have you here. Now, you're obviously here looking after trying to get a scholarship, over 660 grand to try to go to Indy next, next, uh, next year. Uh, that's the focus. But at the start of the year, you end up getting an opportunity to run the Rolex 24 at Daytona. And not only did you get a chance to run it, you ended up winning the Rolex. You guys ended up winning the P2 category. Give me a little, how did it all come together for you to be able to run Daytona? I don't think anyone will believe the story because 
I, even when I review all what happened through the weekend, we were not l very likely to go well in the race until 30 minutes before the start. I mean, in the roar, we had a lot of electronic issues. We didn't drive much at all. And then on the qualifying, of course, uh, my team had a crash. And at that point, we were starting, I think, last of our category. Coming to the race, no running. I think I did five laps on that weekend. People were already running like under 50 or something. And the whole team did like 30. So we were very unlikely. Then we went to free practice. First practice finally went well. And then second free practice, I did a mistake. We were out of the practices until um, the race. 30 minutes before the race, our car was not going on yet. Oh, man. <laughs> and <laughs> we thought, oh, hopefully we can get it running and, you know, have fun in the race. And again, we started the race. I jumped in the car and did a two hours 30 stint. And after that, we were already running second, like five hours in from last so then uh through night we lost a few laps i think we were three laps back then three hours to go and i was like oh yeah i'm just gonna go in and have fun while i drive so i'm four cruise yellows we came out then i jumped out on the car all of a sudden we we're on the lead lap only four cars there to fight and yeah i mean my teammate james did it all for us really <laughs> bringing the car home and yeah it's kind of crazy i uh, it's an it's a story i think you cannot tell and all for all the whole team and for me being so young on my first attempt to the Rolex 24 in my first endurance race <laughs> it was <laughs> quite a crazy one because I know my the, my teammate Jimmy is a Porsche factory driver and he's been looking to win this Rolex 24 for uh, 15 years I think he's been doing endurance racing and I come in on my first attempt and I do it so <laughs> yeah right you both, ah, this is easy what are you talking about good for you great to have that Rolex great to have that on the resume you can see uh, still going to work here now they're going to see if they can't get the number 97 there yeah there's Zach Ping refiring so the cars uh looks like not a lot i don't know if there's any damage to zach ping's number 97 he's going to roll back onto the track we'll see if they can refire the number 17 as well yeah indeed so both of these tatis machines are back underway they were just kind of locked up the crew did a good job to get them apart we got pretty much every service vehicle we have here at the racetrack out at the scene but man we are underway so both, all these drivers getting back on track let's have a look at the as they line up here because a lot of action as uh Francesco had said to one of the drivers, Chase Gardner, moving from 13th up into 8th. So here's your full field rundown. One lap in. We're currently red. We'll go back to green very shortly here once all the vehicles get back to their spots around the racetrack. Lockie Hughes taking the lead from Simon Sykes, as we saw, going into turn number one, aggressively down to the inside, uh, slid through with a bit of contact. Hughes takes the lead. Sykes now running in second as they sit on the uh, pit lane. Elliot Cox in third. Eva Gors Papasabas in fourth. The outside pole sitter, Max Garcia, falling back into fifth. Jacob Douglas in the sixth spot. He started seventh, so a spot for Douglas. Matt Clark started ninth. He goes up into seventh. Gardner up five, as we said. Sam Corey dropping a couple. Started sixth. He goes down to ninth. Jorge Garcia in uh, tenth spot. Danny Dazelski in eleventh. Gordon Scully in twelfth. Lucas St. Jean from 19th up into 13th, so a, a, a six-position improvement for St. Jean. And then we have Maxwell Jamison, Ethan Ho, Avery Towns, Al Mori, and then we'll have Zach Ping and Nikita Johnson back here as well. Now, I wonder coming into pit lane whether or not uh, they will get a put, to put a lap in. No, they're both going to be a lap down. Indeed, yeah, they'll be a lap down as the field uh, is coming to get that second lap. So here comes Ping. I'm sure he'll come in for a... A look over, as will Nikita Johnson. The team will have a look at those cars. But uh, that'll be a lap down, I believe, which is a tough for both of those drivers, especially Nikita Johnson. Uh, Francesco coming in here second place in points, just one point behind Lockie Hughes. He's at the tail of the field. Lockie up front. You, I understand you have the same feeling. You're second in points right now. You're trying to, to see if you can't reel in uh, Miles Rowe. Lots of work to be done over the season, but um, you definitely don't want to have a DNF. Yeah, you definitely don't want to want want to finish all the races. Really, you don't want to DNF. It's you you could see just finishing all the races. Really, not t not risking it too much. I mean, I was I dropped down to 14th at a certain point in the last race, and then I came back up to seventh. And you know that those points kept me on to second place and never giving up. Really, you could think at a certain point you knew we last. You could just pit and get out. But every point is going to be important at the end of the season. I think we're seeing. All the fields are so close in USF 2000, USF Pro, and I think every single point is going to matter, and uh, it's important, I think, for Nagita and Johnson to get back running, even if he can just finish the race and be last, you know. That 19th place still two points, I think. So. It is, and you never know what happens, man. Yeah. It's, all it takes is another incident to get a couple of drivers out, and I believe you can see on pit lane there the crew now pulling back from their car, so I believe we're getting ready to fire things back up, and we'll go back to racing. And the red flag, after two laps go in the book, so two laps down, still 10 laps to go, 
and still a lot of time as well. 28 minutes still remaining on the clock. We have a 40-minute window to get our 12 laps in. That's always the goal here in the USF Pro Championships is to try to see if we can't make sure these drivers get lots of green flag laps. Super excited about what happened with our drivers in USF Juniors. The youngest drivers are part of this ladder program going green to checker in all three of their races. 30 green flag laps, exactly what we wanted out of those drivers. Uh, not so good, actually, in, Indy, uh, in the uh, USF Pro 2000. I almost said Indy Pro. That's going to happen this year. USF Pro uh, 2000. You guys had a couple of yellows. Drivers having some issues. But, uh, again, a, a little stoppage in play here early. Let's hope that we get to go for 10 more full laps. Because, Francesco, you'll say the same thing. It's all about getting lap times. You want to learn the racetracks. You want to learn green flag racing laps. And, and that's what we want. We don't want those yellows. Yeah, we want to drive the most as possible, especially, especially starting on the back when those laps to come back. And I think that the draft is very effective here in Sebring. So I proved it on my races. And really, you can move very far, but already from fourth, fifth gear, you start to win. And especially coming into the first corner, into the last corner, the streets are huge and you have so much time to pull back up. And then, of course, you have these two airplanes on 7 and 10, where you can really uh, send it to the braking and... Uh, yeah, in these races, I think everyone is running for the win, really. We have so many laps to go that everything could happen. We saw it in the USF Pro 2000 race. We saw, uh, yeah, the front row uh, finishing with a best of seventh and uh, people coming back from 12th to 5th. So there is a lot to go, and uh, I think the podium is up for grabs for everyone. Yeah, a lot of chaos at the end of that USF Pro 2000. You're one of the guys that are watching that race. The chaos at the end happened as uh, a South Florida Alba coming through turn number 11 and 12. Actually, I haven't heard of this before, at least in our program, but the fire extinguisher actually went off, covered his visor with the fire extinguisher uh, fluid. He ended up uh, getting off the gas on the brakes coming through turn number uh, 13. Jace Denmark with nowhere to go ran into the back of him. Francesco able to get kind of out of the way to a certain extent. He was off the grass, I think, into the grass twice. Uh, uh, Jackson Lee through, J Jack William Miller able to get through. A lot of drivers making, uh, taking you know, evasive maneuvers to get through there. Uh, a crazy finish for sure. Where did you end up at the end? I haven't even looked at the official results. Seventh. But, I mean, I, it was looking a lot worse. I started second, <laughs> of course, so you would yeah. say it was not a good race. But uh, we limited the damage because I was 12 at a certain point. So we made it back to seven. This just shows how important it is never to give up because especially here in Sebring, everything can happen. Was there an issue with the car at all? Because you were falling back there. I know you kind of got into it. Did you bend something at all or what was it? I don't know. I had some context for sure. Then I got kind of caught up. Uh, when I, while I was fighting and I went off the track and there I lost my five positions from okay. where I was. But yeah, when you're so close and you do a single mistake, we saw it even yesterday with Jace who did a mistake in 17 and that costed him just a very small mistake costed him a position and myself and Joel Grandforce and that could have been, he was catching miles and ended up for Joel and I. So, you know, this track does not say sorry for sure and we are going to see Lucky Hughes is going to have to lead the field. Actually, the first one was get too well, but we need to see because if he can break the toe from Sykes, it's going to be a big difference. But if Sykes has that toe, he could make up to five or six tenths, and that's going to be a huge difference to the end of the race. And Francesco telling me he's going to be watching Lockie Hughes and Jacob Douglas here, former karting teammates of yours back in your days running in karts, and so many of the drivers as part of this USF Pro Championship, of course, starting in the karting ranks, whether it be here in the in the U.S., running in the Supercarts USA, USPKS, Rock Cup, all the different programs that you could potentially run coming up through the ranks. And, of course, so many of the drivers coming through Europe and the CIKF events and the, the WSK races as well. Drivers lining things back up. The pace car is headed off. We'll put lap number three in the books next time by. It'll be nine to go. Lockie Hughes will roll onto the throttle, get back on it. Again, all these drivers powered by elite engines. And away we go. We're back to green flag racing, and Hughes is going to be able to go wide coming out. He's got a good enough a gap over Sykes to be able to hold it down into turn number one. A little further back, you got a defensive run down to the inside. That's deeper in the field, maybe six or seventh at the top three or four drivers coming through clean. The otherwise guys nicely coming through. Driver way wide. They are going to drop a wheel. That's outside the top ten. Another driver fully four wheels off. One of the J. Howard driver development cars is potentially going to fall to the tail of the field. Lockie Hughes, though, holding on. He's able to defend at the start. Got a good jump and almost an issue there. I think that might have been either... Uh, Chase Gardner or Max Garcia getting a bit wide coming out of turn number five. A lot of dust getting kicked up coming through that part of the racetrack. They'll work their way again back down into turn number seven. I think Chase Gardner made it through to six. I think you're reason right. Is that, oh, now Jacob just gave back. Yeah, that was in front of again. But what a recently is that a dream start right now. Just a little bit, just a little bit of a gap from 
Max Garcia now to P6. So the top five is kind of being able to pull away. And that's going to be tough for the sixth guy because he's not going to have any slipstream coming down on 217. And now we see Papa Savas actually get through on Cox. Yeah, Cox is there, but Papa Savas has been able to get through. Eva Gore's Papa Savas for J. Howard Driver development. This will be his first uh, full season running in USF 2000. Didn't start until midway through the season last year. Uh, with a health issue that they had to get dialed in. He was able to get some good seat time last year and now finds himself lined up and looking pretty good, actually, coming in here fourth place in points. Uh, a pair of top fives at St. Petersburg, second and fourth on the record. Here's the bat a little further back. That is behind, I believe, the Chase Gardner run. So it'll be Sam Corey, Jorge Garcia, Danny Dazelski in there. But here comes Lockie Hughes out of turn number 16. Three laps down, nine to go. It'll be eight to go when they come back around. And you can see more defensive maneuvers further back. One of the uh, D-Force drivers coming to the outside of the racetrack. That could be, I believe, thinking further back of the pack, wondering who that may be. We'll watch it coming through. That's in front of Sam Corey. Corey on the outside, trying to run around the outside here on the inside. That's the number 10 of Garcias. Jorge Garcia is able to hold that spot. And I think maybe Corey could be losing a position there to Danny Dazelski as he was trying to go around the outside. Very tough to run the outside of the corner in turn number 17. It's a little precarious in there. Here's a move to the bottom. That is going to be uh, Garcia going by Cox, who drops the wheel on the exit. You see the dust getting kicked up there. Elliot Cox is going to go back to P5 as Garcia making a good move to the inside. You talked about that pass, Francesco. You get a good run out of turn number 17. You get down to the inside. You use the draft. As long as you're down to the inside, you have that position. Yeah, Max Garcia just did it perfectly there. We saw as well Lucky Hughes getting away very well. It's, uh, he has a 1.1 second lead over Simon Sykes, and it's going to be very tough to catch back out, but we, you never know. A full cruise yellow might be around the corner. And, uh, That's a possibility, yeah. <laughs> everything that Lucky Hughes just built up will be up to none in a, in a few turns. I think Papa Sabas is having a very good run, actually. It's closer to uh, Sykes than Sykes is to lose. Indeed. Uh, Eva Goris Papa Sabas looking to get another podium finish. Hot Lockie Hughes out front, your point leader by just one marker over Nikita Johnson. Remember, Nikita uh, down in 18th right now. Zach Ping brought the car into the racetrack but has not returned based on live timing. We'll try to visually confirm that, but the 97 potentially the first scratch uh, on the uh, the grid here. Here is not able to get back out. Hughes, Sykes, Papa Sabas, Garcia, and Cox. One, two, three, four, five. Sixth is Douglas, seventh is Clark. Eighth, Gardner, but we believe he's got a couple more spots. Gardner potentially up into sixth now. Uh, Garcia's in ninth spot. Dazelski's in tenth. There's the battle there between Garcia and Cox. That is for P4. Garcia and Cox are using a lot of ground to Papa Savas right now. They're they're defending and fighting so much, and that doesn't help to receive him because you have these long straights, and when you come into a corner tight, then you're going to lose the whole way, for example, down to 17, and we see what a huge cap they have now, and it will be very hard to catch that back up, and actually Douglas getting back on their tail. Yeah, it seems to me like they're kind of battling it out for fourth position right now as opposed to trying to move their way forward. Here's another side-by-side -side run as one of the... Uh, drivers from VRD Racing working his way through. That is the number 18 of Danny Dazelski as he's, uh, I believe, able to get by Jorge Garcia. So that was the battle there for ninth position. So the two drivers inside the top 10, scrapping it out, coming down into turn number 17. Garcia now officially by. There he is in fourth. Garcia, P4. Oh, another driver dropping a wheel. That was Sykes. You know Simon Sykes pushing hard here right now. Look at this battle. Here goes, as you can see from the tail, Chase Gardner going to work here on Matt Clark. That's the battle for, I believe, the seventh spot, seventh and eighth. Clark in the USF Pro Championship scholarship colors, having won USF Juniors last year, running the number one for D-Force. He and Gardner going at it. That is for uh, the seventh and eighth position. Garcias has lost a couple of spots. Uh, uh, Danny Dazelski getting by first, Sam Corey, and now Jorge Garcias. And uh, Dazelski having a really good run here as well. Now he's on the battle, moving his way forward. And there is good racing just inside the top 10. Everybody running pretty good now outside the top 10. Again, Corey, I believe, 11th. Maxwell Jamison in 12th. Ethan Ho running 13th. 14th, Al Mori. 15th, Lucas St. Jean. 15th is, uh, 15th actually is St. Jean. 16th is Avery Town. 17th, Gordon Scully. And again, a lap back is Nikita Johnson. Just hoping uh, for some more contact that could potentially move him forward. Otherwise, with Lockie Hughes leading, 
And Nikita back at 18th. This could be an opportunity for Lockie to really stretch out at least a decent little advantage going into race number two tomorrow. Yeah, he's for sure stretching that gap right now. I think Sykes looks like the, more, the fastest guy for sure from qualifying, and we really need to check it out. But I think actually Matt Clark and Carlin got both two on Douglas, and they're now 6 and 7, you see, as they cross the line. But you see, just we, we don't even realize a single mistake might lose you two or three spots, and I don't know what the gap is going to be now down the main straight because Sykes went off, and we see that I think Hughes got back this four tenths he got on him, but I think Sykes just got to stay cool, and he, ca he will catch him back eventually. We saw that pace, and especially with the draft, he can get very close to Hughes, but it's very easy to do a mistake, especially with the dirty air that you get, and then the understeer will push you out. If you have a look on top there of the screen, folks, you see the wind that's coming from behind them, coming down into turn number one, and Francesco, the first one of our drivers that we've had uh, in the guest chair here this weekend to talk about different angles of the wind and how maybe it's in your face coming out of 16 to 17 or the side the side shot through 17 you saw that next time by when we see that have a look at those uh, flags on top of the uh, the bridge across uh, uh, the entry to turn number one because the wind is significant here uh, today uh, blue skies all day on Thursday and Friday not a cloud but you can see when we get back to it quite a bit of cloud cover uh, coming over the racetrack there's still a lot of blue skies but there are clouds here today not the completely blue skies we had on Thursday and Friday you can see them there in the shot here from turn number seven there's the gap between first and second Hughes and Sykes last time by was about eight tenths of a second uh, he was pulling out another couple of tenths on that last lap Simon Sykes holding on to second but looking for that first career victory Although Simon Sykes sitting P3, only seven points back, if he's able uh, to potentially uh, hold on to the spot, even though it's not a win, it would move him to second ahead of Nikita Johnson in the points. Papa Sabas right behind him, third, right behind him, fourth in the order as well. So the driver's up top in the points right now, doing pretty good. Trey Burke, P5, no longer with us here this week, and he'll be running in the USAC Silver Crown program, I think, this year. We may see Trey back for a race here and there. But then Sam Corey, P6, he currently runs in the 10th position. So Corey going to want to put his head down and see if he can't get a couple more spots. Actually, shout out to Trey Bruce. What an amazing first race he's had. We, we know he hasn't got the seat time as the other guys, but he just went into St. Pete doing two very, very good races after a good qualifying. And in the first race, he finished fifth and starting fifth, I think. And the second race, he came back from 14th. He had a, an amazing race. And I think, I hope I can see him in the seat more often, really. Yeah, you know, what we saw uh, Trey had a great story, obviously, coming from the, the dirt world, running, uh, you know, mini sprints and, and, and sprint 360 and 410 sprint cars. Uh, of course, we'll see him running some sil uh, USAC Silver Crown racing. And he was running with Future Star Racing, too, a team that just picked up uh, a bunch of USF 2000 cars in the offseason. Their plan is to stick with this USF. Pro Championships. They're going to try to get more drivers potentially into the car. Uh, obviously, Andre Castro ran with them as well. Here comes the battle up front. Simon Sykes closing up. You can see them coming through turn number one. This last time by Sykes quicker by six tenths of a second. Simon Sykes starting to put the pressure on in another drop of the wheel. That is Garcia. He had some trouble coming out of turn number one. Garcia dropped the wheel on the X. He's pushing hard as well. And even though P4 with a bit of a lead right now over Elliott Cox, a minor miscue there for Garcia. Cox still back by about four or five car lengths. Watch them come out of turn number six. In fact, it's a lot more than that. I said four or five, probably about ten car lengths as they work their way down to turn number seven. But the gap between first and second has shrunk for sure. Sykes six tenths quicker on that last lap. The gap less than four tenths of a second. Whether it was a mistake, minor miscue potentially for Lockheed Hughes. That was the best lap he's put in so far. So again, Hughes and Sykes potentially lining up for what could be a good battle. They run one, two. Papa Sabas in third. There's first and second. Look at this. Simon Sykes can feel it. We are eight laps in, four laps to go. Simon Sykes ready to dial things up. Papa Sabas runs third. Garcia and Cox in fourth. Two seconds back to Ellie, or rather Matt Clark running in sixth spot. He's got a second over Chase Gardner, who's got Jorge Garcia, Sam Corey, and Danny Dazelski behind him to cap off the top ten. Francesco, I like the way this is dialing in because second place is starting to pick it up the speed a little bit. Simon Sykes looks like he's ready to potentially battle for the win. I think he'll have a run down to 17. If this is a good exit from 16, he's very, very close to Lucky Hughes, and that draft is going to make a huge difference. I think Hughes has got to look in his mirrors right now because he's a lot faster, and we, you can see how close he is to him. I think Sykes has got to run. Indeed, Simon Sykes with a big run coming down 17. All the way to the bottom goes Hughes. Sykes is going to go around to the outside. Lockie's got to hold that position. Simon thinking about trying the outside here. They're side by side. Tough, 
place to make a move way out wide. Simon trying to hold on to it. Will he get a better run coming down the corner? Sykes is going to be to the inside. Look at this. Hughes keeping him pinched all the way down. Sykes will not lift going into turn number one. Hughes is going to try to keep him down. Now he'll move out. Sykes will come with him to the outside and book it. He's through. Simon Sykes goes to P1. An outside move in 17 pays off in turn number one. The Paps driver now to P1. Look at the battle here further back. A little left front lock up for Lockie Hughes. Big scrap further back as well. That is for the second or the third, fourth, and fifth spot as Garcia now working on Papa Sabas. Not quite through. Although potential driver off over in turn number one. The exit, a couple drivers together on the exit of turn number one, we believe. They're able to roll back on. We'll see whether or not they continue. They do so far. That might be Ethan Ho potentially battling it out with Maxwell Jameson. We'll try to get you an update on that further. Look at the battle right now for the final spot on the podium coming through seven. Papa Savas, Garcia, and Elliot Cox back in the party as well. Nine laps down, Francesco. Three laps to go. Wow, what a move from Sykes. He just held it down to the inside. It looked like Hughes had the covered off, but he just got that inside and he didn't lose it there. I, I tried that move and it didn't work, so I'm very impressed he did it, to be honest. He had a massive run there and I'm very, I mean, <laughs> what a move really. And now the battle for third is getting so good. I don't know what you say in Italian, but in, over here in English, it's, they're essentially playing chicken, right? Coming down into turn number one. Somebody's got a lift and it wasn't Simon Sykes. Yeah, definitely Simon Sykes kept him down. He yelled, yelled it to his foot to the floor and we'll see more grooms. So he's so easy. Garcia and yeah, yeah, Max Papa Garcia Sabas. is pushing Garcia, uh, pushing Papa Sabas through turn 15 over to 16. So indeed, as they come through turn 16 here right now, that shot you see that right, that left hand, right hander rather is turn 15. And look at this, it's Papa Savas on full defense mode. Garcia now seeing if he can't do what his teammate did. And Elliot Cox looking to follow through. Garcia on the outside. Here's a rookie driver in this program, folks, trying to work his way through. And we may have had a pass for the lead there as well. Jumping back over, I think potentially back in. Look at the contact between these two drivers. I think Cox has gone to third. Some contact between Papa Sabas and Garcia, and Lockie Hughes has gone back to P1. Hughes getting through in turn number 17. What a pass there. And oh, another wheel drop there for Simon Sykes. Those right side Coopers are going to be a bit dirty right now, coming through three, four, and five. Crank things up. And a little bit of a wiggle there. Tail wag uh, coming through four for Lockie Hughes. Sykes took the lead, but again, he comes back and gets it. Hughes with a move to get by him over in turn number 17. The fight back, though, as well, as another driver's gone off over in turn number one. Off that track, trying to get back onto the, the racing surface. Not quite sure who that was, but indeed this battle for first and second and the final run on the podium as well, as they are continuing to scrap it out. I think it may still be Papa Sabas as Garcia has fallen back to six. The contact potentially bringing Matt Clark up into the fourth spot. I think Clark could be running P4 the D-Force driver up there as well. Wow, what a race. <laughs> this last lap was absolutely crazy. We lost the pass from the lead from Hughes, but I think Sykes is going to have another run right now, and I think Papa Sava just got away with it. I saw contact between Cox and Garcia later on, and Clark got through on both of them, so Matt Clark now actually could be on a run for the podium. Agreed. Matt Clark, the driver on the move, started back in the ninth position for D-Force Racing, the uh, champion in USF Juniors last year, working his way methodically forward. This is the battle for first and second. Sykes is going to have to press the reset button. It's effectively, this is the battle for the point lead as well. Nikita Johnson, of course, down in 18th, a lap back. Uh, and again, Ethan Ho indeed was one of the drivers. He and Maxwell Jamison were the two that were involved in the incident. And you'll see they worked their way back out here onto 16. It's be our 17 now at the next corner. Big run down here, and it's uh, fully draft time here uh, for... Uh, Simon Sykes being told the battle between the 67 and the 24. So that is uh, Cox and Garcia under review for that contact that we've picked up a little bit of in turn number 17. But as they come across the line, this will be lap number 10. It'll be two more to go. And the battle between Lockie Hughes and Simon Sykes continuing. Sykes gets a big run down the straightaway. He'll try to stay in that draft. Clean through. He's got to put the pressure on. Further back, Papa Sava still holding on to third. Matt Clark's coming, though. He just turned his fastest lap as he's trying to close back up. There's Papa Sabas, there's Clark, there's Cox, and right behind them coming into the screen was Chase Gardner, who's got his way up to six. Gardner, who got into the uh, wall in qualifying, lost his fast lap, dropped from P13, he's up seven spots. Gardner, what a great drive for him to P6. 
Wow, what a drive from Gardner, really. I want to see him start at the front because he, I think in St. Pete, he, as well, he had some issues in qualifying. Always started on the back. He's doing these mega comebacks all the, all the time. But <laughs> we're having fun watching them, but maybe it's better for him to qualify well next time with it. But yeah, an amazing comeback from English and very, really good pace there. And Cox actually is the fastest route there. I think he, he might have misjudged on the breaking point there. And then the contact with Garcia, for sure Garcia got the worst out of it. But now I think Gardner is fighting with him for that fifth, fifth spot. And yeah, we're going to have two more runs down to 17. Let's see That's it. if Sykes is actually calculating for, for Avenue on the last lap. A little trouble there coming through turn number uh, 14. Uh, or the turn number, what's that? I guess turn number 11 coming out of turn number 10 through 11. A little bit of trouble there for Papa Savas, kind of missed a turn in. But indeed, as uh, as Francesco said here, we have a couple more opportunities down to 17 here. This one and one more through 60 or 15, rather, coming back over to 16. We'll see what we get here now, potentially from Simon Sykes. He's trying to dial things back in. Last time by, both drivers turning 207 flat. So Sykes has got to find a bit more because the gap was three tenths of a second last time by. Here's the big run. In fact, a little further back, Cox looks like he's trying to close up on Matt Clark. Could be a battle for the fourth position as well. But this is Sykes closing up. It's maybe three car lengths as they come into Sunset Bend. And again, Sykes looking for that first win, but the bottom line is both of these two drivers looking to dial things up now. Who gets the best run coming out? This one here, white flag flying this time by. One more lap, and thinking about a defensive move to the inside, Lockie Hughes looking in the mirrors to see what he's got out of Simon Sykes. Final circuit, the battle between these two young guns. Sykes again drops a bit of a wheel coming out of one. He is hustling this car around. Defensive run down the inside for Lockie Hughes. Covers off the bottom of the racetrack. That's going to bring Sykes right back in through four and five. Again, they'll work their way to five under the bridge. It's a big sweeping left-hander for turn number six. It's about four or five car lengths as they come out. It's a pretty good run out of there for Lockie Hughes. So that's going to pretty much eliminate a dive bomb move into turn number seven. You'll watch them come in here now. Turn seven. Yeah, not close enough for Simon Sykes. He's going to have to try it all, potentially, over in turn number 17. And there's the number seven, an issue for Al Morey as he's lost the wing. He was battling it out there, I believe, with Avery Towns. So Morey's lost the wing. He'll drop to the tail of the field. But again, we are rolling. They'll have one more circuit waiting for them here in turn number 10. Here we go. Sykes is there. He needs to get the big run through turn 13, and then, of course, all the way through 15 to 16. He's got to set things up here. 13 will be crucial for Simon Sykes to try to get Lockie Hughes, but Lockie's been impressive. A win and a third at St. Petersburg. Does he get another victory here for Jay Howard, driver development? They'll come through this corner. And again, waiting to see. Sykes not quite there. He's going to have to roll a ton of speed through 15. Over to 16 now. Will he have enough to draft? If Papa Sabas looks good for P3, that would be a third straight top five in the second point of, oh yeah, we got this run. Look at this, all the way to the bottom of the racetrack. Sykes is gonna keep him pinched to the bottom of the track. Sykes to the outside. He's gonna try to hold him. We're gonna go side by side, wheel to wheel. This is it in USF 2000. Final lap of race one of the weekend. Sykes is gonna try to roll the outside. He gets good speed through. Does he hold the outside? Big wing, oh he almost loses it. Outside top. And it's going to be Lockie Hughes. He holds him off. Lockie Hughes will win his second race. He is victorious. Race one here at Sebring. But wow, Simon Sykes hogging out to dry on the outside, trying to ride the cushion here at Sebring. And the car just unloading Francesco. He threw everything he could at him. I think there was contact down there. I think they, they might just have touched a little bit. That's what caused Sykes to go off. Might be a review there because they touch. Oh, yeah, there's a battle further back here as well. Finishing off this race, Jacob Douglas and uh, Gordon Scully going at it. This is for 12th position. They were essentially side by side as well. But yeah, potential contact into the corner. They'll have a look at it. But I'm going to say if they're in the corner like that, they'll call that a race against it. And I think both those drivers side by side, those cards are going to be jinking back and forth. The bottom line was we saw a absolutely fantastic final lap battle between Lockie Hughes and Simon Sykes side by side through turn 17. In the end, it's 1.1 seconds for Hughes over Sykes. Both those drivers still obviously very close in the championship battle here for sure. We'll have to look at the fast lap of the race. It might be a 2.062. That would belong, I think, to Simon Sykes. So there's another bonus point for Simon Sykes. Qualified on the pole. Gets potentially the fast lap. Limiting the loss of points to Lockie Hughes. But Hughes, Sykes, 
and Papa Sabas uh, in third. Great run for Matt Clark. He started ninth. He goes up into fourth. Elliot Cox started fourth. He ends up fifth. So a good top five for uh, for Cox. And how about Chase Gardner? Started 13th. He rolls that number 95 exclusive auto sport machine up to six. What a great drive for Chase. He sure knows how to come back. Huh? That's what <laughs> I got to say. But I love these, these racing, man. They, when they come so close into the last corner, I hope there is not going to be any review, really, because I love cl good, clean racing. And, of course, I've seen here in the United States, the racing is very tough. And, like, the, the let slip, some things are a little bit border limits sometimes that's what's racing is you don't need many penalties to decide the race that's i think it. it should be as it finishes really i don't like to get a win from the first guy getting a penalty really Agreed. so yeah. i would uh, i would say this is this was an amazing race very exciting and yeah i mean i think driver of the day has got to go to chase gardner. I think so. what a great what a great drive for, for chase gardner francesco pizzi thank you so much for joining us driver for tj speed motorsports best of luck tomorrow thank you for having me there he is, folks, Francesco Pizzi, obviously great in the booth as well. Fantastic driver. Watch him potentially go for a race win here tomorrow for TJ Speed. But that was a battle for sure. We're going to wrap things up, folks, and head to Victory Lane right now. A quick little break in the action. We'll run a couple of commercials, and then you can join us at Victory Lane, where we'll meet Chet Lockie Hughes, Simon Sykes, and Eva Goris Papasavas. We're like any normal family. We just get shorter wait times because we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. So easy. Which gives us more time for things like... Oh, come on, Mom. <laughs> Ready? And it's all thanks to Kyle. <laughs> Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Let's get you taken care of. Your Uncle Cooper. Your SUV is a multi-purpose tool, like a corkscrew fish scaler. And that means your tires should be multi-purpose too. Like these Cooper rugged treks. They're tough, but also run smooth as butter. And with dual sidewalls, it's like having a multi-tool that can look like a completely now different multi-tool. Please be on grid at no Take later than 6.50. I'm going to patent it. Go with the Coopers. Cooper! It's your Uncle Cooper. Sure, once in a blue moon, you might need your tires for hauling a horse in a hailstorm. But most days, you're going to need your tires for tougher things, like teaching your sister's kid how to parallel park. <sighs> Thankfully, these Cooper Endure Maxes aren't just tough. They're everyday tough. OK, there's a lot of improvement. Go with the Coopers. Cooper. Get a lot of hot. We're like any normal family. We just get shorter wait times because we buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. So easy. Which gives us more time for things like... Oh, come on, Mom. <laughs> it's ready. Wow. Are you sure it's ready? Oh, it's ready. And it's all thanks to Kyle. <laughs> Thank you. Get 30% shorter average wait time when you buy and book online at DiscountTire.com. Let's get you taken care of.
Lane and cap off the day's action, the first of two events for the drivers here in the USF 2000 category, all part of the Cooper Tires Grand Prix of Sebring. Again, say hello to those of you who are tuned into the broadcast here. That was a wild finish for sure. We expect to see more of that tomorrow as well as USF 2000 will be uh, solo on the racetrack and as part of the schedule to cap off their program. Now, a great run for a number of these drivers. Let's get this driver here coming in. Another podium finish for the young pilot here. Finishing in third spot for J. Howard Driver Development. Eva Goris Papasavas coming home in P3. Come on up to the trophy there. Well done, Eva Goris. Good job there. Was able to pull away after some early chaos and settle into that third place position. We were side by side all the way down from 16 to 17 for this one here. Side by side through Sunset Bend. Not able to hold the outside. Some contact mid corner. Driver coming home in second spot for Paps Racing. Simon Sykes finishing in second. Driver coming in as the point leader, end up uh, grabbing the race win here as well to extend that advantage. Finishing in the leader for J. Howard Driver Development, the winner in USF 2000, Lockie Hughes. Lockie, a quick chat here. Obviously, some aggressive racing at the start. You're able to take the lead, which was which was solid coming through one. But it, let's talk about that last lap. Uh, he got alongside you two by two or one by one coming all the way up. What are your thoughts on coming uh, into turn 17? Yeah, it was a tricky race. Obviously, we got the jump at the start, which was awesome. Um, managed to pull a gap, and it, it was hard because the track was so slippery then compared to normal. Just from I know who was before us, just putting shit all over the track. So um, it was, uh, <laughs> it was yeah, a bit tricky, especially leading because I didn't really know how hard I could push. Um, and then Simon caught me, and then yeah, we had a great battle the last few laps. So uh, yeah, it was a good race. Who do you want to thank today? I uh, just thank the whole team, um, everyone at J. Howe Drive Development and uh, all my family watching back home in Australia. Well done, man. Grab that trophy. Let's wrap things up here. He is your winner for race number one of a double header here for USF 2000. Lockie Hughes getting the victory uh, at the line. We're going to do this all over again tomorrow. Separate qualifying as well for these drivers. And then we'll have that race just after the one o'clock hour. Again, lots of racing on these four day event for this Cooper Tire Grand Prix of Sebring. And these uh, drivers here at USF 2000, unbelievable racing, not only at the front, but mid pack as well. We saw some great drivers working their way forward. Chase Gardner getting a bunch of spots, six or seven position moving forward. A uh, number of drivers coming forward. Matt Clark as well, a great drive, I believe, up into the four spot. Elliot Cox rounding out the top five. Number of drivers able to dial things in here and, and get it done. And all the bottom line is, this is a, the first race we've had for the drivers in USF 2000. Of course, a triple header for USF Juniors. They were done yesterday. Indy Pro, uh, USF Pro 2000 wrapping things up as well. They had uh, their second race of of uh, the weekend today. Miles Rowe getting a win there, and Lockie Hughes, the point leader coming in in USF 2000, leaving St. Pete, gets another victory here to extend that gap. Fast lap of the race, I think unofficially going to Simon Sykes. He has the bonus point for qualifying on the pole as well, so limiting the damage in terms of the gap in the points. So still very tight on top. Papa Savas confirming himself up there in third in points. And we see a bunch of drivers that were able to work their way forward. So we'll get rid of this car. We'll move this uh, J. Howard Driver Development Tadis USF 22 out to the right side of the stage we'll pull the champagne out let these drivers go at it guys you can drop those trophies down onto the ground right now we can grab the champagne we know you're racing tomorrow so probably no need to spray each other but light it up folks drivers grip it and rip it let's have a little bit of celebration time here with the champagne spray it here to cap off the opening round of usf 2000 here at sebring again all we have left in this four-day event is qualifying tomorrow for race number two of USF 2000. They'll be on the racetrack again uh, just after 1 o'clock, I believe, 1.30, 1.40 potential start time. We hope you tune in here on USF Pro Championships TV. You can watch, of course, on the YouTube channel. You can watch on USF2000.com, and you can watch wherever you are mobile on the USF Pro Championships app. Download it from Google Play or the Apple store as well so again folks thank you so much for tuning in we appreciate you watching it here it's been a great day at sebring one more day to go thank you so much for being part of it folks on behalf of anderson promotions cooper tires and discount tire my name is rob howden bye for now